How does a hero from the old Greek days live in a world filled with people like Spider-Man and Captain America? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read it dramatically back to you, all alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we'll be looking at Hercules. Now this isn't the old Greek Herc from old times, this is old Herc in modern times. He has lived many lifetimes, and now he is living in an apartment. Two boys look down on a business card. Hercules, labor's undertaken. The boys look up from across the busy street to see an apartment. He lives here? They enter the building and they are met by an older woman in overalls. Are you Hercules? The woman looks down, taking the business card from the boy's hand. It's Sophia, the building owner. Yes, of course, he had business cards made. He lives on the top floor, she says sarcastically. The woman leads the boys upstairs, reminding them that Hercules is a demigod. They'll need to make him an offering that's valuable to them. They walk into his apartment filled with treasures of old and they see a man sitting on the couch eating a bowl of cereal. Are you Hercules? One of the boys asks. No, I am a guest. The man responds. A freeloading guest, Sophia tells him. That's when Hercules himself walks in in sweatpants, telling the man that the eggs are done and calling him Gilgamesh. Yes, that Gilgamesh of legend. Looking over at the three that entered, the boys introduce themselves as Bast and Achille, and they tell Hercules that they have a problem that only he can stop. Achille has a problem with his sister Hannah's boyfriend. He really is a monster, and they know it's true. Before they can go into more details, though, Hercules' cell phone rings, and he's called the duty from the secretary general, but he figures that he can stop by and help the boys out with what they need first. Walking down the street, they offer him their kaiju cards as their offering, which Hercules gladly accepts. Hercules asks if they went to the police first, to which they reply they did, but no one believed them. Hercules did because he can smell the sorcery around them. They eventually make their way to the house, and Hercules is now sitting in front of the young couple. Hercules calls the boyfriend out for what he is, an ermut. The boy then turns into his natural form, and he begins to crawl over and throw Hercules out of the building through the wall, crashing into cars in the street. The two of them go at it, exchanging blow for blow, where finally Hercules gets knocked back, lying on a pile of cars. As he looks up, he can see a ghostly image, and it is Athena, wearing a cloak and holding a spear. He calls to her, but she does not answer. Thinking maybe it's because he didn't address her properly, he tries speaking in the ancient tongue, but then she vanishes before he can get any answers as to why she's here. The kids ask him who he's talking to, but Hercules moves over to his duffel bag, and he starts sorting through its contents. First, a large rifle, a demigod that uses guns, no, he's looking for something else, and he continues to rummage through it, until he pulls out his stun gun. The boys look at Hercules, wondering why he doesn't just kill the Ermut, but he doesn't kill. He's Hercules, and he just wants to stop him. The fight continues with the Ermut, and the demon tells Hercules that he is here to breed. The Ermut are dying, and he just wanted to breed with the humans, but Hercules tells him that he can't do that. This isn't like the old times, and he needs to embrace the modern times. Hercules then pulls down his visor to look at him. It's thermal imaging, and he can see the Malik in his heart grow. With a final rush, Hercules hits him with the stun gun, defeating the Ermut. He then grabs his duffel bag to head over to where he was originally needed to stop a sea monster. Grabbing his rifle and a spear, he charges forward. The news reports later that Hercules won, and they ask, why the makeover? As Hercules returns home, his guest asks how the day went, and he told them, sea monster. Oh, those are the worst. Hercules then went into his armory, and he changed back before walking into the living room to ask Gil if he wants ramen or pierogies. Now this is issue one of Hercules. It's kind of a self-contained story, but the Athena thing is what's hinting at a larger story arc. If you want to know what happens next, go pick up Hercules issue two, or give this video a bunch of likes and we'll just eventually cover it. But I wanted to do the single issue just to see what you guys thought of the superhero. Personally, I find Hercules awesome. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Comic and follow me on Twitter at Comic and we can chat about anything you want. And I'll see you next time right here.